music be the food of love, play on. Oh, give me excess of it, that so fighting the appetite may sicken and so die. Oh, oh, that strain again. I had a dying fall. Oh, it came o'er my ear like the sweet sound that breathes upon a bank of violets, stealing and giving odor. I <laughs> mean, not no more. It's just not so sweet now as it was before. Oh, spirit of love, how quick and fresh art thou that, well, notwithstanding thy capacity, receiveth as the sea. The Lord enters there of what pitch and validity soever but falls into abatement at low price. Even in a minute, so full of shapes is fancy that it alone is high fantastical. Will you go hunt, my lord? To what, Curio? The heart. So I do, the noblest that I've ever seen. Oh, when my eyes did see Olivia first, methought she purged the air of pestilence. Oh, that instance was I turned into a heart, and my desires, like fell and cruel hounds, her sins pursue me. How now? What news from her? So please, my lord, I might not be admitted. But from her hand may do return this answer. The element itself, till seven years heat, shall not behold her face at ample view. But, like a cloistress, she will veil and walk in water once a day her chamber round with eye offending bride. All this to season a brother's dead love, which should keep fresh and lasting in her sad remembrance. Ah, is she that hath the heart of that fine a frame to pay a debt of love unto a brother? Well, how will she love when the rich golden shaft hath killed the flock of all affections else that live in her when liver and brain and heart these oh, sovereign thrones are, are all supplied? In field, her sweet perfections with oneself king go away before me to sweet beds of flowers. Love thoughts lie rich when canopied with bowers. Sebastian! Sebastian! Oh, what country, friends, is this? Oh, this is Illyria, lady. Oh, and what should I do in Illyria? My brother, he's in Elysium. Chance he is not drowned. Sebastian! What think you, sailors? Well, it is perchance that you yourself were saved. Oh, my poor brother. So perchance may he be. Ah, oh, true, madam. And to comfort you with chance, assure yourself, after our ship did split, when you and those poor numbers saved with you hung on our driving boat, I saw your brother most provident in peril bind himself, courage and hope both teaching the practice to a strong mouth that lived upon the sea, where, like Arian on the dolphin's back, I saw him old acquaintance with the waves, so long as I could see. Well, for saying so, there's gold. Find your own escape unfoldeth to my hope, whereto thy speech serves for authority the like of him. Oh, knowest thou this country? I'm not, for I was bred and born not three hours' travel from this very place. And who governs here? Noble Duke in nature as a name. What's his name? Orsino. I've heard my father name him. He was a bachelor then. And, and so is now. Of course, so very late, but a month ago I went from him. And it was fresh and murmur that he did seek the love of fair Olivia. Oh, was she? A virtuous maid, the daughter of a count who died some twelve months since, still living her into protection of his son, her brother, who also shortly there died, for whose love they say she hath endured the sight and company of men. Oh, that I served that lady might not be delivered to the world until I had made mine own occasion mellow what my estate is. That's so hard to compass, for she will admit no kind of suit for not to do. Well, there is a fair behavior in thee, Captain. I quit thee, and I'll pay thee bounteously. Conceal me what I am, for such disguise shall happily become the form of my intent. I will serve this duke. Thou shalt present me as a eunuch to him, and it may be worth thy pains, for I can sing and speak to him in all sorts of music that will allow me very worth his service. What else may have? Time I will commit. Only shape thou silence to my wit. Be you his eunuch, and your mute I'll be. And my tongue blabs, and let mine eyes not see. I thank thee. Lead me on. What plague be my knees to take the death of a brother but? I'm sure carries an enemy to life. By my troth, Sir Toby, you must come in earlier, O Knights. Your cousin, my lady, takes great exceptions to your ill hours. Why, let her accept before accepted. Aye, but you must confine yourself within the modest limits of order. Confine? I'll confine myself no finer than I am. These clothes are good enough to drink in, and so be these boots, too. 
Beth, if they be not, let them hang themselves on their own straps. That quaffing and drinking will undo you. I heard my lady talk it earlier. And of a foolish knight, you brought one knight here to be her wooer. Who, Sir Andrew Aguchi? I, he. Oh, he's as tall a man as any in Illyria. And what's that to the purpose? Oh, why, he has 3,000 ducats a year. Aye, and he'll have but a year in all those ducats. He's a very fool and a prodigal. Fine, that you'll say so. <laughs> he plays the viol de gamme, boys, speaks three oh. or four languages, word for word, without book, and he hath all the good gifts of nature. He hath indeed. Almost natural, for besides that he's a fool, he's a great quarreler, and but that he hath the gift of a coward to allay the gusty having quarreling, tis but among the prudent he would quickly have the gift of a grave. Oh, by this hand they are scoundrels oh. and subtractors that say so. Who are they? They that add, moreover, he's found drunk, nicely, in your company. With drinking health to my niece, I will drink to her as long as there is a passage in my throat and drink in Illyria. He's a coward and a coistrel that will not drink to my niece till his brain turn to the toe like a parish dog. What wench! Oh. <laughs> Castellano Valgo, for here comes Sir Andrew Aguface. Sir Toby Bell, chow now, Sir Toby oh, Bell. Sweet Sir Andrew. <laughs> Bless you, fair shrew. And you too, sir. A cost, Sir Andrew, a cost. <laughs> What's that? My niece's chambermaid. Good Mistress Acost, I desire better acquaintance. My name is Mary, sir. Oh, well, good Mistress Mary Acost. You mistake, knight. Acost is to front her, okay. woo her, assail her. <laughs> but which I would not undertake her in this company. Is that the meaning of Acost? Fare you well, gentlemen. And thou that part so, Sir Andrew, thou might never draw a sword again. And you part so, mistress? I would I might never draw a sword again. Fair lady, do you think you have fools in hand? Why, sir, I have not you by the hand. Mary, but you shall have, and here's my hand. Why, sir, thought is free, I pray you. Bring your hand to the buttery bar and let it drink. <laughs> We're for sweetheart. Oh, it's your metaphor. It's dry, sir. I think so. Well, I'm not yet such an ass that I can't keep my hand dry. Oh, it's your jest. It's a dry jest, sir. You full of them? Aye, sir, I have them at my fingers' ends. Mary, now I let go your hand, I am barren. Oh, knight, thou lackest a cup of canary. Oh, when did I see thee so put down? Never in your life, I think, unless you see the canary put me down. Methinks sometimes I have no more wit than an ordinary man has. <laughs> But I am a great eater of beef. I think that does harm to my wit. Oh, no question. If I thought that, I'd forswear it. Faith, I'll write home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Pourquoi, dear knight? What is pourquoi? Do or not do? Oh, I would have had bestowed the time and the tongues I had in fencing and dancing and bear baiting. Oh, had I but followed the arts. I then hadst thou had a most excellent head of hair. Why would that have mended my hair? Well, past question, for thou seest it will not curl by nature. But it does become me well enough, does not. Yeah, excellent! It hangs like flax on a distaff. I hope to see a housewife take thee between her legs and spin it off. Pray the right home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Your niece will not be seen, or if she be, it's four to one, shall none of me. The Count himself here hard by who's her. Shall none of the Count. I should not match above her degree, neither in estate years nor wit. I have heard her swear it. Talk, there's life in it, man. I'll stay a month longer. I am a fellow of the strangest mind in the world. I delight in masks and revels and sometimes all together. Oh, art thou good at these kickshaws, these knights? As any man in Illyria, whatsoever he be under the degree of my betters. And yet I will not compare to an old man. <laughs> What is thy excellence in a galliard knight? Faith, I can cut a caper. And I can cut the mutton into it. And I think I have the back trick simply as strong as any man in Illyria. But wherefore are these hid? Wherefore are these gifts a curtain before them? Are they like to take dust? Why dost thou not go to church in a galliard and come home in a caranto? Oh, my very walk should be a jig. I should not so much as make water, but in a sink of pace. What dost thou mean? Is it a world to hide virtues in? No, I did think by the excellent constitution oh. of thy leg, it was formed under the star of a galleon. Aye, it is strong. It does indifference well in a flame-colored stock. Shall we set about some rebels? What shall we do else? Let me see the caper. <laughs> Higher! <laughs> Excellent! Uh, if the view continues these favors for you, Cesario, you are like to be much advanced. He has known you but three days, and already you are no stranger. Will you either fear his humor or my negligence to call into question the continuance of his love? Is he inconstant, madam, in his favors? No, believe me, I thank thee. Here comes the Count. Who saw Cesario home? On your attendance, my lord, here. 
the loop. Caesarea. Thou knowest no less but all I have unclapped to thee the book of even my secret soul. Therefore, good youth, address thy gate unto her. Be not denied access. Stand at her door and tell them there thy fixed foot shall grow till thou have audience. <sighs> sure, my noble lord, if she be so abandoned to her sorrow as it is spoke, she never will admit me. Be clamorous and leap all civil bounds rather than make unprofited return. Say I to speak to her, my lord. What then? Oh. Uh, then unfold the passion of my love. I'll describe the discourse of my dear faith uh, that she'll attend it better in thy youth than in a nuncio of more grave aspect. I think not so, my lord. Oh, dear lad, believe it. For they shall yet belie thy happy years to say that thou art a man. <laughs> Diana's lips are not more smooth than rubies, and thy small pipe is as the maiden's organ, shrill and sounded. All else is semblative a woman's part. <laughs> uh, I know thy consolation is right apt for this affair. <coughs> Prosper well in this, and thou shalt live as freely as thy lord. The call is fortune's thine. Do my best to woo your lady. <laughs> oh, it's a barful strife, whoe'er I woo myself would be his wife. La, 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 la. such a barren rascal. I saw him put down the other day with an ordinary fool that hath no more brain than a stone. <laughs> Look you, he's out of his guard already. Unless you laugh and minister occasion to him, he is gag. I protest at those wise men that crow so at these set kind of fools as no better than the fool zanies. Oh, you are sick of self-love, Malvolio, and speak of the distempered appetite. To be generous, guiltless, and a free disposition is to take those bullets as bird bolts. There is no slander in an allowed fool, though he do nothing but rail, nor no railing in a known discreet man, though he do nothing but reproof. 
Now, Mercury endue thee with leasing. Thou speakest well of fools. Madam, there is it the gaze young gentleman much desires to speak with you. But Count Orsino, is it? I know not, madam. It is a fair young man, and well attended. Who of my people hold him in delay? Sir Toby, madam, Ooh. your kinsman. Go! Fetch him off. He speaks nothing but madmen. Why on him? Malvolio, go you. Be soon from the Count. I am sick or not at home. What you will to discuss it? <laughs> Swears he will speak with you. I told him you were sick. He seems to have more knowledge of that, and therefore comes to speak with you. I told him you were asleep, and he seems to have more knowledge of that too, and there come, for comes to speak with you. What can be said to him, lady? He's fortified against any denial. Tell him he shall not speak with me. Has been told so, and he says he'll stand at your door like a sheriff's post and be the supporter to a bench, but he'll speak with you. What kind of man is he? Why, of Mankind. <laughs> what manner of man is he? Oh, a very ill manner. He'll speak with you, will you or no? Of what personage in years is he? Not yet old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy. One would think his mother's milk was scarce out of him. Call him in, but call my gentlewoman as well. Gentlewoman! My lady calls. Come, throw my veil over my face. We'll once more hear Orsino's embassy. The honorable lady of the house? Which is she? Oh, look to me, I shall speak for her. Your will? Most radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable beauty. I pray you, tell me if this be the lady of the house, for I never saw her, and I would be loath to cast away my speech. Besides that it is excellently well done, I have taken great pains to con it. Whence came you, sir? I can say little more than I have studied, and that question is out of my heart. Good gentle one, give me modest assurance that you be the lady of the house, that I may proceed in my speech. Are you a comedian? No, my profound heart, no, and yet, by the very faints of malice, I am not that I play. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not usurp myself, I am. Most certain, if you are she, you do usurp yourself. For that which is yours to bestow is not yours to reserve, but... This is from my commission. I will on with my speech in your praise. Come to what is important in it. I forgive you the praise. Alas, I took great pains to study it. And tis poetical. It is the more like to be faint, I pray you. Keep it in. I allow to approach at my gates, though you were saucy. Rather to wonder at you than to hear you. If you be not mad, be gone. If you have reason, be brief. Tis not that time of moon with me to make one in so skipping a dialogue. Will you hoist sail, sir? Here lies your way. No, good swabber, I am to haul here a little longer. Sure, you have some hideous matter to deliver when the courtesy of it is so fearful. Madam, speak your office. It alone concerns your ear. I bring no overture of war, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive in my hand, and my speech is as full of peace as matter. Yet you began rudely. What are you? What would you? The rudeness that hath appeared in me have I learned from my entertainment. What I am and what I would are a secret as maidenhead to your ears, Madam Divinity. For any others, for 
profanation. Leave us this place alone. We'll hear this divinity. <coughs> now, sir, where lies your text? Uh, in Orsino's bosom. In his bosom? In what chapter of your bosom? To answer by the method, lady, the very first of his heart. Oh, I've read that. It's heresy. Have you no more to say? Good matter. May I see your face? Have you any commission with your lord to negotiate with my face? Now you are out of your text. We will draw the curtain and let you see the picture. Such a one eye was this presence, but not well done. Excellently done, if God did all. Tis in grain, sir, to lend your wind and brother. Tis a beauty truly blent, madam, whose reds and whites take his own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive if you will leave these graces to the grave and leave the world no coffee. Oh, I will not be so hard-hearted. I'll leave diverse schedules of my beauty. It shall be inventory, and every particle and utensil labeled to my will. As item, two lips in different red. Item, two gray eyes with lids to them. Item, one neck, one chin, and so forth. Were you sent hither to praise me? Madam, I see you what you are. You are too proud. <laughs> but if you are the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. Such a love could be but recompensed, though you were crowned the non pariah of beauty. How does he love me? Oh, with adoration, with fertile tears and groans that thunder love and sighs of fire. Your lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. Yet I suppose him noble, know him virtuous, free, learned, and valiant, great estate, a fresh and stainless youth, and in the shape and dimension of nature, a gracious person, yet I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. If I did love you in my master's flame with such a suffering, such, such a deadly life in your denial, I would find no sense. I, I would not understand it. What would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate and call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of contaminated love and sing them loud even in the dead of night. Hallow your name to the reverberate hills and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia. Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, madam, but you should pity me. We might do much. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my estate is well. I am a gentleman. Good you to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him send no more, unless perchance you were to come to me again. To tell me how he takes it. Ah, uh, fare you well. I thank you for your pains. Spend this for me. I am no thief, host lady. Keep your purse. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. Love makes his heart a flint that you shall love, and let your fervor, like my master's, be placed in contempt. Farewell, fair cruelty. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my estate is well. I, I am a gentleman. I'll be sworn thou art thy. Tongue, face, limbs, actions, and spirit do give thee a fivefold blaze it. Soft, not too fast. Unless the master were the man. How now? Even so quickly may one catch the blade. Methinks I feel this use perfections with an invisible and subtle stealth to creep in at mine eye. Will let it be? How now, Malvolio? Here, madam, at your service. Run after that same peevish messenger, the county's man. He left this ring behind him, would I or no? Tell him I'll none of it. Desire him not to flatter his lord, nor hold him up with hopes. I am not for him. If that the youth will come this way tomorrow, there'll be reason for it. Behind thee, Malvolio. Madam, I will. I do, I know not what, fear to find. Mine eye too great a flatter for my mind. Fate, show thy force. Ourselves we do not owe. But as decreed must be, it be this so. Stay no longer. Know you not that I go with you? By your patience, no. My stars shine darkly over me. The malignancy of my fate might perhaps distemper yours. Therefore, I shall crave of you your leave, that I may bear my evils alone. It, it were a bad recompense for your love to lay any of them on you. Let me yet know of you whither you are bound. No! Sooth, sir, my determined voyage is mere extravagancy. But I 
perceive in you so excellent a touch of modesty that you will not extort from me what I am willing to keep in. Therefore, charges me in manners the rather to express myself. You must know of me then, Antonio, my name is Sebastian, that I called Rodrigo. My father was that Sebastian Messaline, whom I know you have heard of. They left behind him myself and a sister, both born within an hour. And if the heavens had been pleased, would we so it ended? But you, sir, altered that. For some hour before you took me from the breach of the sea was my sister drowned. Last the day. Oh. A lady, sir. Though it was said she much resembled me. She had of many accounts of beauty. But though I could not with estimable wonder her over far believe that yet thus far I will boldly publish her. She bore a mind that envy could not but call fair. She is drowned already, sir, with salt water, though I seem to drown her remembrance again with more. Pardon me, sir, your bad entertainment. Antonio, forgive me your trouble. If you will not murder me for my love, let me be your servant. If you will not undo what you have done, that is, kill him whom you have recovered, desire it not. Fare you well. My bosom is full of kindness, and I am yet so near the manners of my mother that upon the least occasion more mine eyes will tell tales of you. I am bound to the Count Orsino's court. Farewell. The gentleness of all the gods go with me. I have many enemies in Orsino's court, as I would very sure to see me there. But come what may, I do adore thee so. The danger shall seem sport, and I will go. Were you not even now with the Countess Olivia? Even now, sir, on a moderate pace, I have arrived but hither. She returns this ring to you, sir. You might have saved me my pains to have taken it away yourself. She adds, moreover, that you should put your lord into a desperate assurance she will none of him. Oh, and one more thing, that you be never so hardy to come in his affairs again, unless it be to report your lord's taking of this. Receive it, so. If she took the ring of me, I'll none of it, sir. Come, sir, you peevishly threw it to her, and it is her will it be so returned. If it be worth stooping for, there it lies in your eye. If not, be it his that finds it. I left no ring with her. What means this lady? If fortune forbid my outsides have not charmed her. Oh, and she made good look upon me. Indeed, so much that methought her eyes did lose her tongue, for she did speak in starts distractedly. Oh, she loves me. The cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger. None of my lord's ring. <laughs> Why? He sent her none. I am the man. <laughs> oh, I am the man. If it be so, as tis. For lady, she were better love a dream. Disguise, I see thou art a wickedness. For how easy it is for the proper folks and women to lax in hearts to set their forms. Oh, what will become of this? My master, he loves her dearly. And I, poor monster. Now fond as much on him, and she mistaken seems to dote on me. Oh, how will this badge? <laughs> as I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love, and as I am woman, now the last day, and with breathless sighs shall poor Olivia breathe. Time, thou must untangle this knot. I, it is much too hard a knot for me to untie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, approach, Sir Andrew. Oh, not to be abed after midnight is to be up betimes. Nay, by my troth, but I know to be up late. Oh, is to be up late. <laughs> A false conclusion! I hate it as an unfilled can. To be up after midnight and go to bed then is early. So to go to bed after midnight is to go to bed the times. It's not our life consists of the four elements. Faith, so they say. 
Well, I think it rather consists of eating <laughs> and drinking. Ah, uh, thou art a scholar. Yeah. I say, therefore, let us eat and drink. <gasps> Marianne, I say, a stoop of wine. A stoop of wine. Here comes the fool to uh, say. How now, my heart? <laughs> Welcome, ass. Thou let's have us a catch. Oh, by my troth, the fool has an excellent breast. I'd rather the 40 shilling I had such a lame oh. and so sweet a breath to sing as the fool has. In sooth, thou wast some very gracious fooling last night when thou spokest of the Gorgobidus of the Vapians passing the equinoctial of Quibus. <laughs> oh, very good faith. <laughs> oh, I sent thee sixpence. Hadst it? I did in petticoats thy gratility, for Malvolio's nose is no whipstock. <laughs> And my lady has a white hand, and the myrmidons are no bottle ale houses. <laughs> Excellent! This is the best fooling when all is done. Now, a song. And there's a sixpence for you. Let's have a catch. Here is a <coughs> testral of me, too. Mm, uh, will you have a love song or a song of good life? A, a love song, a love song. I, I care not for good life. All right, all right, all right. Oh, mistress mine, where are you, Romy? Oh, stay and hear your true love's coming that can sing both high and low. Trip no further, pretty sweeting. Journeys end in lovers' meeting. Every wise man's son doth know. Excellent, good and faith. Good, good. What is love? Tis not hereafter. Present mirth hath present laughter. What to come is still unsure. In delay there lies no plenty. Come and kiss me, sweet and twenty. You such stuff will know. And you are. Ah, I'm a little oh, blue as I am true night. I know. A contagious breath. Very sweet and contagious in face. Either here by the nose, it is dulcet and contagious. Shall we make the welkin dance indeed? Yes. Shall we not rouse the night owl and a catch draw three souls yes. from one weaver? <laughs> Shall we do that? <laughs> and you love me, let's do it. I am dog at a catch. Uh, oh. By your lady, and some dogs will catch well. Oh, get a Most catch certain. well. Oh. <laughs> Let our catch be, <laughs> thou knave. Oh, hold thy peace, thou knave knight. Yeah. I shall be constrained to call thee knave knight. Knave knight! <laughs> this is not the first time I've constrained one to call me knave. Begin, fool. It begins. Hold <laughs> thy I shall never begin if I hold my peace. <laughs> Good, come, begin. All right, all right, all right, Hold thy peace. Hold thy peace. Hold thy peace. Hold thy peace. Have 
have you no respect of place, persons nor time in you. We did keep time, sir, and our catches snack up. Snack up! Whoa. Sir Toby, <laughs> I must be round with you. My lady bade me tell you that though she harbors you as her kinsman, she is nothing allied to your disorders. If you can separate yourself and your misdemeanors, you are welcome to the house. If not, and it will please you to take leave of her, she is willing to bid you farewell. Farewell, dear hearts, for I must needs be gone. His eyes do show, his days are almost done. But I will never die. Oh, wait, Sir Toby, there you lie. This is much to your credit. Shall I bid him go? What and if you do? Shall I bid him go and spare not? Oh, no, 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 you can't. <laughs> Out of tune, sir, ye lie. I'm wearing stupid Mistress Mary, if you prize my lady's favour at anything more than contempt, you would not give means to this uncivil rule. She shall know of it by this hand. Go shake your ears. Shake your ears. Oh, to a good a deed is to drink a man's hungry, to challenge him to field, and then break promise with him and make a great fool of him. Oh, you do it, knight. I'll write thee a challenge, or I'll deliver thy indignation by word of mouth. Sweet Sir Toby, be patient for tonight. Since youth of the Counts was today with my lady, she's much out of quiet. For Monsieur Malvolio, let me alone with him. I do not gull him into a name or to turn him into a common recreation. Do not think I have wit enough to lie straight in my bed. I know I can do it. Possess us, possess us. Tell us something of him. Mary, sir, sometimes he's a kind of Puritan. Oh, if I thought that, I would beat him like a dog. <laughs> what? For being a Puritan? Mm -hmm. Exquisite yeah. reason. Yeah. No exquisite reason for it. You did not have reason good enough. The devil a Puritan that he is, or anything constantly but a time pleaser, an affectioned ass that con state without book and opposite and great swore. The best persuaded as he thinks with excellencies, that it is his grounds of faith that all that look on him love him. And on that vice in him will my revenge find notable cause to work. What will thou do? Oh, I will place in his way some obscure epistles of love, yes. wherein, by the shape of his leg, the manner of his gait, the expression of his eye, forehead, and complexion, he shall find himself most feelingly personated. I can write very like my lady, your niece. On a forgotten matter, we can barely make distinction of our hands. Excellent. I smell it in my heart. I have it in my nose, too. <laughs> he shall think by the letters that thou wilt drop that they come from my niece and she's in love with him. My purpose is indeed a horse of that color. And your horse would now make an ass of him. <laughs> I doubt not. Oh, it would be admirable. Sport royal, I warrant you. I know it will work with him. Oh, I will plant you two and let the fool make a third where he shall find the letter. Oh, for tonight observe his construction of it and dream on the event. Farewell. Oh. Good night, Penthesilia. Before me, she's a good wench. Oh, she is a big rock, true bread, and one that adores me. More of that. I was adored once, too. <laughs> Let's to bed, night. Thou hast need send for more money. If I cannot recover your niece, I am a foul way out. Send for more money, night. Thou not have her in the end. <laughs> Call me cut. And I do not. Take it, ever trust me. Take it how you will. Oh, God. <laughs> I'll go bury some sack. Ow. It's too early to go to bed. Come now. So the light, airs, and recollected terms of these most brisk and giddy pace time. Come but one verse. He is not here, so please your lord that should think of it. Well, who was it? Best he's a jester, my lord, a fool that the lady Olivia's father took much delight in. He is about the house. But 
seek him out and, and play the tune a while. Come hither, boy. Ever thou dost love and the sweet pangs of it remember me. Such as I am, all true lovers are unstayed and skittish and all motions else save the constant image of the creature, all that is beloved. How dost thou like this tune? And give the very echo to this deeper loveth throne, my lord. Thou dost speak masterly. My life upon it. Young though thou art, thine eye has stayed upon some fancy that it loves, hath it not, boy? A little by your favor. Oh, what I kind of woman is it? Of your complexion, my lord. She is not worth thee then. Oh, what years it been? Oh, about your years. Oh, my too old! Oh, by heaven, let still the woman take an elder than herself. But so wears she to him, so sways her level in her husband's heart. For, boy, however we can praise ourselves, our, our fancies are more giddy and unfirm, more longing and wavering, sooner lost and worn than women's are. Well, I think it well, my lord. Then let thy love be younger than thyself. Or oh, thy affection cannot hold the bent, for women are as roses whose fair flower being once displayed doth fall that very hour. Alas, <laughs> so they are. Oh, oh fella, come. That song we had last night, mark it, Cesario, it is old and plain, the spinsters and the knitters and the sun, and the free maids that did weave their thread with bones did used to chant it. Oh, it's silly soup. It dallies with the innocence of love. Like the old age. Now you're ready, sir. Aye! Ha! <laughs> Prithee, sing! <coughs> Do you know, come away, come away, death? Sure. Yeah. Come away, come away, death, and in sad cypress let me be laid. <laughs> fly away, fly away, breath. I am slain. <laughs> by a fair cruel maid, my shroud of white, all stuck with you. Oh, prepare it, my part of death. No one so true did share. Not a flower, not a flower, sweet. <laughs> On my black coffin let there be strewn. Not a, uh, not a friend, not a friend. Greet my poor corpse where my bones shall be thrown. A thousand, thousand. Sighs to say, lay me aware. Sad, true lover, never find my great pain to again, Cesario. Get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty teller. My love, more noble than the world, it prizes not the quantity of dirty lands, the, the parts of which fortune has bestowed upon her. Tell her well, I hold as giddily as fortune. Oh, but tis that miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks here and attracts my soul. But if she cannot love you... I cannot be so answered. Sooth, but you must. Say that some lady, as perhaps there is, hath for your love as great a pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her, so you tell her. Must she then not be answered? There's no woman 
and sides can bide the beating of so strong a passion as love doth give my heart. For no woman's heart so big to hold so much. They lack retention. Oh, alas, their love might be called appetite. No, no motion of the palate, but, but the liver. Oh, but mine is all as hungry as the sea and can digest as much. I'll make no comparison between that love a woman can bear me. Not I owe Olivia. Aye, but I know. Oh, what dost thou know? Too well what love women to men may owe. In faith, they are as true of heart as we. My father had a daughter once who loved a man. And as it might be, were I a woman, I should your lordship. What's her history? A blank, my lord. She never told her love, but let concealment like a worm in the bud feed on her damask cheek. She pined in thought. In a yellow melancholy, she sat like patience on a monument, smiling at her grief. <laughs> Was this not love indeed? We men, we may say more, swear more, for indeed our shows are more than our will, but still we prove much in our vows, but very little in our love. Uh, but thy, thy sister of our love, my boy. Uh, I am all the daughters of my father's house, and all the brothers too, and yet I know not. Uh, sir, shall I to this lady? I, oh, that's the theme, to her in haste, give her this jewel. Say, my love can give no place, bide no denay. Come thy way, Signor Fabian. Nay, I'll come. If I lose a scruple of this court, let me be quiet to death with melancholy. Wouldst thou not be glad to see this niggardly, rascally sheep biter come to some notable shame? I would exult, Ben. You know, he brought me out of favor with my lady over a bear bathing here. To have him angry again, we'll, we'll have the bear again, and we'll fool him black and blue, shall we not, Sir Andrew? And we do not, it is a pity of our lives. <laughs> oh, here comes the little villain. How now, my mantle of India? Give ye all three to the box tree. Here comes Malvolio down this walk. He has been yonder in the sun, practicing behavior to his own shadow this half hour. Observe him for the love of mockery. Close, in the name of Jesse. Oh. Lie thou there, for here comes a trout that must be caught with tickling. <laughs> Tis but fortune, all is fortune. For I once told me that should my lady fancy, it should be one of my complexion. Besides, she uses me with a more exalted respect than anyone else that follows her. What should I think on it? Here's an overweening row. Oh, peace. Contemplation makes a grave turf to conquer him. Look how he jets under his advanced flutes. Slight, I could so beat the rogue. Peace, I say. <laughs> to be Count Malvolio. Ah, oh, rogue. Pistol him. Pistol him. Peace. Peace. There is example for it. The lady of the straight, she married the yeoman of the wardrobe. Fie on him. Jezebel! Peace. Now he's deeply in. Look how imagination blows him. Being three months married to her, Sitting in, in my state, over a stone bow, to hit him in the eye. Calling my officers about me, in my branched velvet gown, <laughs> having left a daybed where I left Olivia sleeping. Fire and brimstone! Oh, peace, peace! And then to have the humor of state, <clears throat> and after a demure travel of regard, telling them I knew my place as I would they should do theirs, to ask for my kinsman, Toby. Bolts and shackles! Oh, peace, peace, peace! Now, now! Seven of my people with an obedient start make out for him. I frown the while and perchance wind my watch or play with my, oh, some rich jewel. Shall this fellow live? <laughs> Though our silence be drawn from us with cars, yet peace. Toby approaches, courtesies there to me. I extend my hand to him thus extinguishing my familiar smile with a austere regard of control. Does not Toby take you a blow with the lips then? Yeah. Saying, Cousin Toby, my fortunes having cast me on your niece, give me this prerogative of speech. What? You must amend your drunkenness. Out, scab! Lady patience, we break the sinews of our plot. And besides, you waste your time with a foolish knight. Hey, that's me, I warn you. <laughs> One, Sir Andrew. I knew it was I for many to call me fool. What? 
<laughs> what employment have we here? Now is the woodcock near the gym. Oh, peace, in the spirit of humor's intimate, reading aloud to him. By my life, this is my lady's hand. These be her very C's, her U's and her T's, and thus she makes her great P's. It is, in contempt of question, her hand. Her C's, her U's and her T's. Why that? <clears throat> to the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes. Her very phrases. To whom should this be? Wisdom, liver and all. Jove knows I love, but who? Lips do not move. No man must know. No man must know. If this should be thee, Malvolio. I'll marry, hang thee, Brock. I may command where I adore. M O A I doth sway my life. A bastion riddle. Excellent wench, say I. M O A I doth sway my life. Nay, but first, let me see, let me see, let me see. What dish of poison is she dressed in? I may command where I adore. Why, she may command me, I serve her, she is my lady. Why, this is evident to any formal capacity. <laughs> and the end, what should that alphabetical position portend? If I could make that resemble something in me. Soft M O. Make up that he is now at a cold scent. Hmm. Malvolio. M. Why, that begins my name. <laughs> but then there is no consonancy in the sequel. A should follow, but O does. And O shall end, I hope. Nay, or I'll cudgel him and make him cry, Oh! <laughs> and then I comes behind. I, and yet any I behind you, you might see more detraction at your heels and fortune before you. M O A I. For every one of those letters is in my name. <laughs> Soft here follows prose. <clears throat> if this fall into thy hand, revolve. <laughs> in my stars I am above thee, but be not afraid of greatness. <laughs> some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. <laughs> Be opposite with a kinsman, surly with servants, let thy tongue tang arguments of state. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings, and wish to see thee ever cross guard. <laughs> I say, remember. Go to, thou art made, if thou desirest to be so. If not, let me see thee a steward still. Farewell. She that would alter services with thee, the fortunate unhappy. I will be proud. I will read politic authors. I will battle Sir Toby. I will wash off gross acquaintance. I will be point devised the very man. She did commend my stockings of late. She did praise my leg being cross gartered and in this she manifests herself to my love. I thank my stars. I am happy. I will be strange, stout in yellow stockings and cross gartered Jove and my stars be praised! Oh, here is yet a postscript. <laughs> <coughs> thou canst not choose but know who I am. If thou entertainest my love, let it appear in thy smiling. Thy smiles become thee well. Therefore in my presence still smile, dear my sweet, I prithee. Jove, I thank thee. I will smile. <laughs> I will do everything that thou will have me. <laughs> <laughs> I could marry this wench for this device. Oh, so could I too. Oh, and ask no other dowry with her but such another jest. Nor I neither. Oh, look. Here comes my noble gull catcher. Wouldst thou set thy foot in my neck, Dampy? Or mine either? <laughs> Shall I play my freedom a trade trip and become oh, thy bond slave? In, in faith, or, or I either? Excuse me. Thou hast said in such a dream <laughs> that when the image of it leaves him, he must run mad. Nay, but say true, does it work upon him? 
like aqua vitae with a midwife. If you will then see the fruits of the sport, mark first his approach before my lady. He will come to her in yellow stockings, a color she abhors, and cross garter, a fashion she detests, and he will smile upon her, which will now be so unsuitable to her disposition, being addicted to a melancholy as she is, that it cannot but turn him into a notable contempt. If you will see it, follow me. I'll do the gates of charge with that most excellent devil of wit. I'll make one too. <laughs> I do live by the church, for that I live in my house, and my house doth stand by the church. Ah. <laughs> so thou mayst sayest that the king lies by a beggar, if the beggar dwell near him, or the church stands by thy tabor, if thy tabor stand by the church. Ah, so you have said. Ah, to see this age, a sentence is a chevral glove to a good wit. How quickly the wrong side may be turned outward. Oh, nay, that's certain for those that dally nicely with words may quickly make them wanton. I would therefore, sir, my sister had had no name. Why, man? Why, her name's a word, and to dally with that word might make my sister wanton. <laughs> Indeed, words are very rascal since bonds disgraced them. By reason, man. Troth, sir, I can yield you none without words, and words are proof so false I am loath to prove reason with them. Oh, I warrant, thou art a merry fellow and cares for nothing. Uh, not true, sir. Uh, I do care for something, but in my conscience, sir, I do not care for you. If that be to care for nothing, I would it would make you invisible. Oh, art thou not the Lady Olivia's fool? Hey. <laughs> Indeed. No, sir. The Lady Olivia has no folly and will keep no fool till she be married. Indeed, I am not a fool, but a corrupter of words. I saw thee late at Count Orsino. No foolery, sir. Doth walk about the old like the sun. It shines everywhere. I would be sorry if the fool should be as off with your master as with my mistress. I, I think I saw your wisdom there. Nay, now thou pass upon me. I will no more with thee. Behold, there is expenses for thee. Oh, now Jove and his next commodity of hair send thee a beard. By my troth, I'll tell thee I'm almost sick for one, though I would not have it grow on my chin. Is the lady within? Uh, would not a pair of these have bread, sir? Uh -huh. Yes, sir, being kept together and put to use. Oh, I will play Lord Pandarus of Phrygia to bring a Cressida to this Troilus. I understand you, uh, it is well begged. <clears throat> the lady is within, sir. I will construe to them whence you came. Uh, who you are and what you would are none of my welkin. I would say element, but the word is overworn. <laughs> this fellow is wise enough to play the fool, and to do that well craves a kind of a wit. Uh, for folly that he wisely shows his fit, but wise men, folly fallen, quite taint their wit. <laughs> Save you, gentlemen. And you, sir. De you bois guardi, monsieur. Et vous aussi, votre serviteur. And I hope, sir, that you are, and I am yours. Will you encounter the house? My niece is desirous you should enter, if your trade be to her. I am bound to your niece, and if she is the lift of my voyage. Taste your legs, sir. Put them to motion. My legs do better understand me, sir, than I understand what you mean by bidding me taste my legs. I need to go, sir, to enter. Well, I will answer your feet and enter. But we are vented. Most accomplished lady, the heavens reign over from you. This is a rare courtier. Reigns odors. Thy speech hath no voice but to your own pregnant and vouchsafed ear. Odors and pregnant and vouchsafed. I'll get them all three already. <laughs> Let the garden door be shut and leave me to my hearing. Now, sir, your hand. My duty, madam, and most humble service. Uh, what is your name, sir? Cesario is your servant's name, fair princess. Oh, my servant, sir. It was never merry world since lowly fame has caused compliment. Your servant the Count Orsino, you. And he is yours, madam, and his must needs be yours. Your servant's servant is your servant. You will 
for him, I think not on him. I would his thoughts were planks rather than filled with me. And I come to wet your gentle thoughts on his behalf, madam. I beseech you. I bade you never speak of him again. But were you to undertake another suit, I would rather hear you to solicit that than music from his spears. Dear lady, if I may. Oh, I... give me leave. I did send, after the last enchantment you did hear, a ring in chase of you. So did I abuse my servant, myself, and I fear me, you. Under your hard construction must I sit to force that on you in shameful cunning, which you know none of yours. What might you think? Have you not set mine honor at the stake and baited it with all the unmuzzled thoughts a tyrannous heart can think? One of your receiving enough is shown. Cyprus, not a bosom, hides my heart. So let me hear you speak. Madam, I pity you. That's a degree to love. No, not agrees. Tis vulgar proof that very oft we pity our enemies. Why then, methinks tis time to smile again. A world, how after the poor are to be proud. If one should fall prey, it's better to fall before the lion than the wolf. Do not be afraid, I will not have you. Though so when wit and youth has come to harvest, your wife is like to reap a proper man. There lies Maidenhood, honor, truth, and everything. I love thee so that neither all thy pride nor wit nor reason can my passion hide. But do not extort thy reason from this clause. Reason, thus with reason, fetter. Love sought is good, but given unsought is so much better. Oh, by my innocence, I swear, and by my youth, I have one heart and one bosom and one truth that no woman shall have, nor none shall ever be mistress of it, save I alone. And so. Adieu, good madam. Nevermore will I my master's tears to you deplore. He did yet come again, for thou mayst move that heart which now abhors to like his love. Oh. No, faith, I will not play a chap longer. Thy reason, give better, give thy reason. You must needs give your reason, Sir Andrew. Mary, sir, I saw your niece do more favors to the count serving man than she ever bestowed upon me. I saw it in your turn. Did she see thee the while, old boy? Tell me that. As plain as I see you now. This was a great argument of love in her toward you. What? Will you make an ass of me? I will prove it legitimate, sir, upon the oaths of judgment and reason. Okay. She did show favor to the youth in your sight, only to exasperate you, to awake your dormouse valor, to put fire in your heart. And brimstone in your liver. Okay. <laughs> should have then accosted her, and with some excellent jests, you should have begged the youth to stone it. Ow! This was looked for in her hand, and this was bought. Ow! With the double guilt of this opportunity, you let time wash off, and now you are sailed into the north with my lady's opinion, for you will hang like an icicle in the Dutchman's beard unless you do redeem it by some laudable attempt, either of valor or of health. If be any way, it must be with valor. Why for build me thy fortunes upon the basis of valor, and challenge me the Count's youth, to fight with him, hurt him in eleven <laughs> places. <laughs> Mighty shall take note of it. Assure thyself there is no love broker in the world can more prevail in man's commendation with woman than report of valor. <laughs> there is no way but this, Sir Andrew. Go, write it in a martial hand. Be cursed and brief. No matter how witty, so it be eloquent and full of invention. Taunt him with the license of ink. Let there be gall enough in thy ink, though thou write with a goose pen. No matter about it. Ah, where shall I find you? We'll call thee at the cubiculo. Go. <laughs> This is a dear medicine to you, Sir Kobe. Oh, I have been dear to him, lad. Some two thousand strong or so. We shall have a rare letter from him, but you'll not deliver it. Never trust me, then. And by all means, stir on the Count's youth to an answer. <laughs> oh, look where the youngest red of nine comes. If you desire the spleen and will laugh yourselves in the stitches, follow me. Yond gull, Malvolio is turned heathen, a very renegado, and he's in yellow stockings. <laughs> oh, in cross guard. Oh, most villainously. <laughs> he does obey every point of the letter that I drop to betray him. He does smile his face into more lines and is in the new map with the augmentation of the Indies. You can hardly believe such a thing as tis. I can hardly forbear hurling things at him. 
I know my lady will strike him, and if she do, he'll smile and take it for a great favor. Come, bring us, bring us where he is. I would not by my will have troubled you, but since you make a pleasure of your pains, I will no further chide you. Ah, I could not stay behind you. My desire more sharp than filed steel did spare me for. And now I'll love to see you, though so much as it'll draw one to a longer voyage. Ah, but jealous who it might be for your travel. Being skillless in these parts to a stranger unguided and unfriended often prove rough and unhospitable. Ah, my willing love by these arguments of fear set forth in your pursuit. Oh, my kind Antonio. I can no other answer make but thanks, and thanks, and ever. Oft good turns are shuffled off with such uncurrent pay, but were my worth, as is my conscience firm, you should find better dealing. <laughs> oh, what's to do? Shall we go see the relics of this town? Tomorrow, sir. Best first go see your lodgings. But I am not weary, and tis long tonight. I pray you, let us satisfy our eyes with the memorials and things of, of fame that do renown this city. Well, would you pardon me? For I do not without danger walk these streets once in a sea fight. Against the Countess galleys I did some service. Such notes, indeed, that if I were taken here, it would scarce be answered. It would be like you slew a great number of his people. The offense is not such a bloody nature. I'll be in the quality of time and quarrel might well have given us bloody argument. We might have since been answered in repaying what we took from them, which, for traffic's sake, most of our city did. Only myself stood out, for which if I be lapsed in this place, I shall pay dear. <laughs> Do not then walk too open. Doth not fit me. Hold, sir, here's my purse. In the south suburbs that the elephant is the best to lodge. How will we speak our, our diet whilst you beguile the time and feed your knowledge of the fearing of this town? Why, I, your purse. Well, happily, your eyes should light upon some toy you have desired to purchase. And your store, I think, is not for out of market, sir. <laughs> I'll be your purse bearer and leave you for an hour. <laughs> the elephant to the elephant. I do remember. I have sent after him. He says he'll come. But how shall I feast him? What the store of him for you has bought more often begged or borrowed. Uh, where's Malvolio? He is sad and civil and suits well for a servant of my fortunes. Where is Malvolio? He's coming, madam, but in a very strange manner. He is sure possessed, madam. Why? What's the matter? Does he rave to you? No, madam. He, he does nothing but smile. Your ladyship were best to have some care about you, for sure the man is tainted in his wits. Well, go call him hither. I am as mad as he, if sad and very mad as he will be. <laughs> How now, Malvolio? Oh, sweet lady, hello. Smilest thou, I sent for thee upon a sad occasion. Sad? I could be sad, lady. This does make some obstruction in the blood, this cross gartering, but <laughs> what of it? If it pleases the eye of one, it is with me at the very true son it is. Please one, and please all. How dost thou, man? Is something the matter with thee? Not black in my mind, but yellow in my legs. It does come to his hands, and command shall be executed. I think we do know the sweet Roman hand. Oh, listen, wilt thou go to bed, Malvolio? To bed? Oh, <laughs> oh, but <laughs> Why dost thou smile so and kiss my hand so oft? How do you, Malvolio? At your request, nightingales answer doors. Why appear you with this ridiculous boldness before my lady? Be not afraid of greatness, what will writ? What meanest thou by that? Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust Whoa! upon them. Heaven, <laughs> restore thee! Go, go to, thou art made, if thou desirest to be so. If not, let me seek thee a servant still. Am I made? Uh, Madness. Uh, uh, madam, the, the young gentleman of the Count Orsino is, is returned. I can hardly entreat him back. He attends you, our ladyship's pleasure. Tell him I'll come to him. Good Mariah, let this fellow be looked to. Where's Sir Toby? Let some of mine people have a special care of him. Oh! oh. <laughs> 
told me to look to me. She does that on purpose, so I am a fair stubborn to him, for she incites me to that in the letter. Be opposite with a kinsman, surly with a servant, let thy tongue tang arguments of state. And when she went away now, let this fellow be looked to. Fellow, not Malvolio, but fellow. <laughs> Why everything adheres together, that no dram of a scruple, no scruple of a scruple can come between me and the full prospects of my hope. Well, Jove, not I, is the doer of that, and he's to be praised. Which way is he, in the name of sanctity? Here he is, here he is. <laughs> How is with you, sir? How is with you, man? Go off, I discard you. Let me enjoy my private, go off. Oh, did not I tell you, Sir Toby? My lady prays you to have a care of him. Aha, uh -huh, does she so? Go to, go to, peace. Peace, we must deal gently with him. Let me alone. How do you, Malvolio? How is it with you? What man? Defy the devil! <laughs> Consider, he is an enemy to mankind. Do you know what you say? Lie, you, and you speak ill of the devil, how he takes it at heart. Pray God he be not bewitched. Carry his water to the wise woman. Marry, and it shall be done tomorrow morning if I live. My lady would not lose him for more than I'll say. How now, Miss? Oh, Miss. Lord! Oh, pretty, hold thy peace. This is not the way. Do you not see? You move him. Let me alone with him. No, wait, but gentleness. Gently. Gently. <laughs> the faintest rocker will not be roughly used. <laughs> Why, how now, my barcock? How dost thou, Chuck? Sir. Hey, Biddy, come with me. What man? Get him to say his prayer, Sir Toby. Get him to pray. My prayers be. No, I warrant you, he will not hear of godliness. Go, hang yourself all. You are idle and shallow people, and I am not of your helmet. You shall know more hereafter. <laughs> Is it possible? <laughs> if this were played upon stage now, I could condemn it as an improbable fiction. Well, his very genius hath taken the infection of the device, man. Nay, pursue it now, lest the device take air and taste. Oh. Why, we shall make him mad indeed. The house will be the quieter. Oh, come, we'll have him in a dark room and bound. My niece is already in the belief that he is bad. We may carry it thus for our pleasure and his penance. <laughs> to our very pastime, tired out of breath, prompt us to have mercy on him, at which time we will deliver the device to the bar and crown thee for a finder of madmen. <laughs> oh, but see, but see. <laughs> More matter for a May morning. <laughs> Here's the challenge. Idiot. <laughs> I warrant there's vinegar and pepper in it. It's so saucy. I, I warrant him. Do it read. Give me. I, I, you, whatsoever thou art, thou art but a scurvy fellow. Good and valiant. Wonder not, nor admire not in thy mind why I do call thee so, for I will show thee no reason for it. Uh, good note. That keeps you from the blow of the law. <laughs> Thou comest to the Lady Olivia, and in my sight she uses thee kindly, but thou liest in thy throat. That is not the matter I challenge thee for. <laughs> Very brief, and to exceeding good sense, less. What? I will waylay thee going home, where it be thy chance to kill me? Good! Thou killest me like a rogue and a villain. Still you keep the windy side of the law. Good. <laughs> Fare thee well, and God have mercy upon one of our souls. He may have mercy upon mine, but my hope is better, and so look to thyself. Thy friend, as thou usest him, and thy sworn enemy, Andrew Aguchi. <gasps> If this letter move him not, his legs cannot, I'll give it to him. Oh, you may have very good occasion for it. He's now in some commerce with my lady and will by and by depart. 
<laughs> Go, Sir Andrew. Hey, scout me for him at the corner of the orchard like a bum bailey. And so soon as ever thou seest him draw. <laughs> And, and as thou drawest, swear horrible. Away! Nay, let me alone for swearing. Now will I not deliver his letter. I'll deliver his challenge by word of mouth. Set upon Ague Cheek a notable report of valor, and drive the gentleman, as I know his youth will aptly receive it, into a hideous opinion of his rage, skill, fury, and impetuosity. <laughs> this will so fright them both, they will kill one another by the look, like cockatrices. <laughs> oh, here he comes with your niece. Give them wait till he take leave, and then presently after him. I will then take the while upon a horrid message for a challenge. I have set too much into a heart of stone, and laid mine honor too uncherry out. Something in me reproves my fault with such a headstrong, potent fault that is that it but mocks reproof. With the same hager that your passion bears goes on my master's grief. Here, wear this jewel for me. It is my picture. It hath no tongue to vex you, refuse it not. What shall you ask of me that I'll deny, that honor saved it when asking may give? Nothing but this, madam, your true love for my master. How may you give him that which I have given you? I will acquit you. Come again tomorrow. Fare you well. Kings like thee might bear my soul to hell. Gentlemen, God save you. Uh, and you, sir. Uh, that defense thou hast, we take thee to it. Uh, for the nature of what wrongs are that thou hast done him, I know not. But thy interceptor, full of despite, bloody as the hunter, attends thee at the orchard end. Dismount thy talk, be yar in thy preparation, for thy assailant is quick, skillful, and deadly. You mistake me, sir. I am sure that no man has my remembrance is very free and clear of any offense done to any man. You'll find it otherwise, I assure you. Therefore, if you hold your life at any price, we take you to your guard. For your opposite hath in him what youth, strength, skill, and wrath can furnish man withal. Uh, I pray you, sir, what is he? He is knight, dug with unhatched rapier, but he is a devil in private brawl. <laughs> Souls and bodies hath he divorced three. Oh, and his incensement at this moment is so implacable that satisfaction can be none but by pangs of death and sepulcher. Oh. Hobnob is his word. Give it or take it. I will return again into the house and desire some conduct of the lady. I am no fighter. I have heard of some men who, who purposely put quarrels on others to taste their valor. But like this is a man of that court. <laughs> Sir, no. His indignation derives itself from a most competent injury. Therefore, get you on and give him his desire. Back you shall not to the house. Oh, this is as uncivil as strange. I beseech you, do be the courteous office as to know of the night what my offense to him is. It's something of my negligence, nothing of my purpose. I will do so. Senior Fabian, stay you by this gentleman till my return. I pray you, sir, do you know of this matter? I know he is incensed against you, even to a mortal arbitrament, but nothing of the circumstance more. I pray you, do you know what manner of man is he? Uh, nothing of that wonderful promise to read him by his form, as you are like to find in the proof of his valor. He is indeed, sir, the most skillful, bloody, and fatal opposite that you could have ever possibly found in any part of Illyria. Will you walk toward him? I will make your peace with him, oh, if I can. I shall be much bound to you for it. I am one that had rather go with Sir Priest than with Sir Knight. I care not who knows so much of my medal. Oh, I bet he is a very devil. I, I had a pass with him, rapier, scabbard, and all, and he gives me the stuck ah! with such mortal motion that it is inevitable. Parkshot, I'll not meddle with him. Aye, but he will not now be pacified. Oh. Fabian can scarce hold him yonder. Oh, my God! <laughs> I thought he'd been so valiant and cunning in fence. I'll have seen him damn there. I'll have challenged him. Oh. <laughs> let him let the matter slip, and I'll give him my horse. Great Capulet? I'll make the motion. Stand here and make a good show on it. Okay. This will not end in the perdition of souls. Mary, I'll ride your horse as well as I ride you. 
I have persuaded him the youth a devil. <laughs> he is as conceited of him, and pants and grows pale as if a bear were at his heels. There is no remedy, sir. He will fight you for his own sake. Mary, he hath better been thought of his quarrel, therefore draw for supporters of his vow. He promises he will not hurt you. May God defend me. A little thing would tell how much I lack of a man. Give ground if you seem furious. Come, Sir Andrew. Uh, the gentleman will, for his honor's sake, have one bout with you. But he promises me he will not hurt you. Come on, to it. Pray God he keep us out. I do assure you, tears against my will, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Depart from me. Let's go. There's money for thee. Uh, okay. 
<laughs> Tarry longer, I shall give you worse payments. Oh, by my troth, thou hast an open hand. These wise men that give fools money get themselves a good report after fourteen years' purchase. Now, sir, have I met you again? <laughs> There's for you. <laughs> is in this, or how runs the stream, or am I mad, or else this is a dream. Oh, let fancy still my sense in Lethe steep. If it be thus to dream, still let me sleep. Nay, come, I prithee, would thou be ruled by me? Oh, madam, I will. Well, say so, and so be. <laughs> guard, 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 guard. Guard, guard, prisony, prison guard, guardedy guard, clank, 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 nor lean enough to be thought of as a good student. But to be a, a good man and a careful housekeeper goes as well as to be an honest man and a great scholar. <clears throat> ah, the competition enters. Joel, bless thee, Master Parson. Uh, 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 Bruno's uh, dears, Sir Toby, or as the old hermit of pride that never saw pen or ink very wittily said to a niece of King Gorbaduck, that that is, is, so that I, being Master Parson, am Master Parson. For what is that but that, and is but is. To him, Sir Thomas. <laughs> Fear, fire, foo, ar, ear, hear, little sheepy, 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 hear, little sheepy. Oh, oh. What? Ho, I say, peace. In this prison? <laughs> knave counterfeits well. A good knave. <laughs> Who calls there? Sir Topas, the curate, comes to visit Malvolio, the lunatic. <laughs> Sir Topas, Sir Topas, good Sir Topas, go to my lady. Oh, out, hyperbolic fiend! How vexest thou this man? Talkest thou nothing but of ladies? <laughs> well said, Master <laughs> Parson. Good Sir Topas. Never was man thus wronged. Do not think I am mad. They have laid me here in hideous darkness. Fie, thou dishonest Satan! How vexest thou this man? Sayest thou that house is dark? As hell, Sir Topaz. Oh, what? It hath 
bay windows as transparent as Cleese trees, and the barricados to the south north are as lustrous as ebony. Yet, though, complainest of obstruction. I am not mad. I say this house is dark. Bad man, thou eddest. I say there is no darkness but ignorance. Ah, and I say. <laughs> This house is as dark as ignorance, though ignorance were as dark as hell. And I say, never was a man thus abused. I am as well in my wits atop us as you are. Make the trial of it any constant question. How many sheep does it know? <laughs> if you take a man and you put a sheep no, what is the opinion of Pythagoras? Concerning the <laughs> wild fowl. <laughs> that the soul of our granddam might happily inhabit a bird. And what thinkest thou of this opinion? Oh. I, I think nobly of the soul, and in no way approve his opinion. Fairly well, remain now still in darkness. Thou shalt hold the opinion of and I will allow thy soul, and fear to kill the woodcock, lest thou dispossess the soul of thy granddam. Fear thee well! Sir Topaz, Sir Topaz! <laughs> My most exquisite Sir Topaz! Nay, I am for all waters. Mary, you might have done this without thy beard and gown. He sees thee not. To him in thy own voice. Bring me word how thou findest him. I wish we were well rid of this knavery. If he may be conveniently delivered, I wish he were. For I am now so far in offense of my knees that I cannot pursue with any safety the sport to the upshot. <laughs> and come by and by to my chamber. Oh! oh. 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 <laughs> hey, Robin, jolly Robin, tell me how thy lady does. Fool! Thy lady is unkind, purdy. Fool! Alas, why is she so? Fool, I say. She loves another. What? Who calls, huh? Good fool. As ever thou wilt deserve well at my hand, help me to a candle, pen, ink, and paper. As I am a gentleman, I will live to be thankful to thee for it. Master Malvolio. Aye, good fool. Uh, alas, good sir, how fell you beside your five wits? Never was a man so notoriously abused. I am as well in my wits, good fool, as thou art. Uh, but as well, then thou art mad indeed to be as well in thy wits as a fool. They <laughs> have not profited me. Keep me in darkness, send ministers to me, asses, and do all they can to face me out of my wits. And why what you say, the minister may is ear hay. <laughs> This is 
the air. That is the glorious sun. Oh, and this pearl that she gave me. Oh, I do feel it and see it. And though tis wonder that enwraps me thus, yet tis not madness. Oh, where's Antonio then? I could not find him at the elephant. And yet there he was, and, and there I found this credit that he did range the town to seek me out. This council now might do me gold in service. For though my soul disputes well with my sense that this may be some, some error, but no madness, yet doth this accident and flood of fortune so far exceed all instance, all discourse, that, that I am ready to distrust mine eyes and, and wrangle with my reason that persuades me to any other trust but that I am mad. Or, or else the lady's mad. Yet if twere so, she could not swear how. Commander, followers, take and give back affairs. Such a smooth, discreet, stable baron. As I perceive she does. <clears throat> There's something in it that is deceivable. Oh, but here the lady comes. <laughs> I am not as haste to fly, but if you mean well, go with me and with this holy man into the chantry by. Uh -huh. There, before him, and underneath uh -huh. that consecrated roof, uh -huh. I be the full, oh, oh sure, and of your faith that my most jealous and too dreadful soul might um, <clears throat> live at peace. You shall conceal it whilst you are willing it shall come to know, at which time we a celebration according to my birth will keep. So what do you say? I'll follow this good man and go with you, and having sworn truth, ever will be true. Then lead the way, holy father, and heaven so shine that they may fairly note this act of mine. <laughs> no. 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 no, no, thou loves me. Let us see last. Good, fast the Fabian. Ask another request. Do not desire to see this letter! Just give a dog and break a pinch to desire my dog again! Belong is you to Lady Olivia, friends! I said, aye, sir, we are some of her trappings. I know thou! How dost thou, my good fellow? Oh, sir, the better for my foes and the worse for my friends. Well, just the contrary, the better for thy friends. No, sir, the worse. Oh, how can this be? Mary, sir, uh, uh, they. Uh, they praise me and make an ass of me. Now, my foes tell me plainly that I am an ass, so that by my foes I profit in the knowledge of myself, and by my friends I am abused. So that conclusions to me as kisses, if your four negatives make your two affirmatives, why then, uh, the worse for my friends and the better for my foes. <laughs> oh, why, this is excellent. Yeah, by my troth, no. Uh, that would please you to be one of my friends. Ah, thou Can shalt it? not be the worth for me. Uh, there's gold. Uh, Uh, but, but that didn't make you a double deal in this, sir. Uh, would you could make it another? Oh, you give me ill counsel. Uh, put your grace in your pocket for this once and let your flesh and blood obey. Well, I will be so much a sinner as to be a double dealer. There's another. Primo, segundo, tertiary. Is the old saying, and as the old saying goes, the third pays for all. And I can fool no more money out of me at this throw. If you will let your lady know that I am here to speak with her and bring her along with you, it, it might awaken my bounty further. Oh, marry, sir, let your bounty take a nap till I wake it again. It is lullaby your bounty, and I'll wake it anon. Here comes the man, sir, that did rescue me. Well, that face of his I do know well, yet when I last saw it was besmeared as black as Vulcan's in the smoke of war. A bobbling vessel was he captain of. What's the matter? Lucille, well, this is Antonio. And this kid at the tiger board, when your young nephew Titus lost his leg, here in the streets, desperate of shame and state, in spite of gravel that I apprehend him. He did me kindness, sir. He drew on my side. But in conclusion, put strange street speech upon me, and I know not twas what distraction. Well, notable pirate, thou saltwater thief, what foolish boldness brought thee to their mercies, whom thou and Term so bloody and so dear has made thine enemies. Lucino, noble sir, be pleased that I shake off these names you give me. Antonio never yet was thief or pirate, though I confess I'm basing ground enough for Lucino's enemy. It was a witchcraft that brought me hither. That most ungrateful boy there by your side from the root seas and rage and foamy mouth that I redeemed. The rack fast hope he was. His 
best life I gave to him, and that you did add my love without retention or restraint, all his in dedication. For his sake that I expose myself to the dangers of this adverse town. Through to defend him when he was beset, whereupon being apprehended, his false cunning, not meaning to partake with me in danger, taught him to face me out of acquaintance, and drew a girl twenty years things while one would wink. Deny oh, me ah, mine ah. own purse, which I had recommended to his use about a half an hour before. How can this be, when sir? When came I... he to this town? Today, my lord. For three months before, no interim and not a minute's vacancy. Fellow! Both day and night Fellow! Thy words are madness. For three months this youth has tended upon me, but more of that anon, take him aside. What would my lord, for that he may not have, wherein Olivia may seem serviceable? Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. <laughs> Madam? A gracious Olivia. What do you say, Cesario? Good, my lord. My lord would speak my duty hush as me, madam. If it be aught to the old tune, it is as fat and fulsome to mine ears, howling after music. Still so cruel. Still so constant, lord. What? To perverseness? Oh, thou uncivil lady, to whose ingrate and unauspicious alters my soul, the faithfulest offering hath breathed out the air devotion tender. What shall I do? Even what it please, my lord, that shall become him. And why should I not? And am I the hard to do it like the Egyptian thief at point of death? Kill what I love! A savage jealousy that sometimes savors nobly, but hear me this, since you to non-regard it's cast my faith, and that I hardly know the instrument that screws me in my true place in your favor. But live you, a marble-breasted tyrant still, with this, your minion, whom I know you love, and whom by heaven I swear I tender dearly. Him will I tear out of that cruel eye where he sits crowned in his master's spite. Well, come, boy, with me, my thoughts are right and mischievous. I'll sacrifice the lamb that I do love to spite a raven's heart within a dove. And I most jocund ask and willingly to do you rest a thousand deaths would die. Where goes Cesario? After him I love. More than I love these eyes, more than I love my life, more by all mores than e'er I shall love wife. I me detest it. How am I beguiled? Oh, madam, how are you beguiled? Who does do you wrong? Have I forgot myself? Is it so long? Call forth the Holy Father. Come away. With her, my lord. Cesario, husband, stay. Husband. My husband, can he that deny? Her husband, Sirrah. No, my lord, not I. Alas, face with thy fear that makes thee strangle thy propriety. Be that thou so knowest thou art, then thou art as great as that thou fearest. Welcome, Holy Father, hereby thy reverence to unfold what lately we have intended to keep in darkness, but what now occasion reveals before tis ripe, what hath newly passed between this youth and I. A, a contract of most holy eternal bond of love, and confirmed by the mutual joinder of your hands, uh, attested by the holy close of lips, and strengthened by the interchangement of your rings. But all this ceremony sealed by my testimony in my custom, uh, since when my watch hath told me, towards my grave I have I have traveled but two hours. O oh, thou dissembling cub! Or what will I be when time is so to grizzle on thy case? Or will not else thy apt so quickly grow that thine own trip shall be thine overthrow? Farewell, and take her, but direct thy feet from henceforth, where thou and I may never meet. My lord, I do protest, oh, do I not swear, for thou hast too much fear. Well, I let her go! Surgeon! Send my friends with me to fix it! Oh, be! He has broke my head across, and he's given true Toby a bloody cock to come to her level god's I am rather than pointing proud that we're at home. <laughs> We took him for a coward, but he's the very devil incarnate! Oh, my gentleman, Cesario! As <laughs> my place, here she is! You broke my head for nothing! And that's what I did! I was set on to do it by Sir Toby! Sir, why do you speak to me? I never hurt you! You drew your sword upon me without cause, but I was spake you fair and hurt you not! If a bloody cock's don't be hurt, I think you hurt me! I think you said nothing by a bloody coxcomb! Oh, here comes Sir Toby halting. You shall hear more. If he had not been in drink, he would have tickled you other gates than he did. Come on, Please. gentlemen. How's it with you? Oh, that's all one has hurt me, and there's the end on it. I know. Uh, uh, yeah, I did see the exertion, Oh, he's drunk, Sir Toby. An hour have gone. His eyes were set late in the morning. A 
event. He's a rogue. And a passing measures Gavin. I hate a drunken rogue. Away oh, with him. Who has made this havoc with them? Ah, uh, Mr. Sir Toby. Because we'll be dressed together. <laughs> Will you help an ass head in a box go? And a name the soup. Get him to bed. Let his hurt be looked to. I am sorry, madam. I have hurt your kinsman. But had it been the brother of my blood, I'd have done no less with wit and safety. You throw a strange regard upon me. And by that I do perceive it hath offended you. Pardon me, sweet one, even for the vows we made so late ago. One face, one voice, one habit, and two persons. A natural perspective that is and is not. Antonio! Oh, my dear Antonio, how have the hours racked and tortured me since I've lost thee? Sebastian, are you? Fearest thou that, Antonio? Well, how have you made division of yourself? An apple cleft in two is no more twin than these two creatures. Which one is Sebastian? Most wonderful. Oh, do I stand there? <laughs> well, I never had a brother. <laughs> Nor can there be that deity in my nature of here and everywhere. <laughs> well, I had a sister. <laughs> Well, whom the blind waves and surges have devoured. Of charity, what kin are you to me? What, what countryman, what name, what parentage? Of Messaline. Sebastian was my father. And such as Sebastian was my brother too, so it went he suited to his watery tomb. If spirits can assume both form and suit, you come to fright us. Well, a spirit I am indeed, but am in that dimension grossly clad with from the womb I did participate. Well, are you a woman? Well, as the rest goes even, I should let my tears fall upon your cheek and say thrice welcome, drowned Viola. My father had a mole on his breast. Oh, so in mine! <laughs> <laughs> and he died that day when Viola had numbered thirteen years. Ooh, that record is lively in my soul. <laughs> he did indeed finish his mortal act that day that made my sister thirteen years. If nothing lets to make us happy both than this, my masculine usurped attire, do not embrace me in relief circumstance. Time, place, and fortune do fall here. Which, to confirm, I'll bring you to a captain in this town where lie my maiden's weeds. By whose gentle help I was preserved to serve this noble count. And all the occurrence of my fortune since hath been between us, this lady and this lord. Well, so comes it, lady. You have been mistook. But nature and her bias, true in that, you, you would have been contracted to a maid. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, nor in, uh, are you deceived by my life. You are betrothed both to a maid and a man. <laughs> oh, be not amazed, right noble is his blood. If this be so, as yet the glass seems true, I shall have share in this most happy wreck. Boy, thou hast said to me a thousand times, thou never shouldst love woman of like to me. And all those sayings will I over swear. And all those swearings keep as true in soul as doth that orb's continent the fire that severs day from night. Give me thy hand. Let me see thee in thy woman's weeds. Ah, <laughs> uh, how doth Mount fool you? Eh, he, he holds Beelzebub at stave's end as well as any man in his case may do. Oh, has here written you a letter. Oh. Uh, I should have delivered it today morning, but as a madman's epistles are no gospel, so it skills not when they are delivered. <laughs> Open it and read it. Uh, uh, look then to be well edified when the fool reads the madman. <coughs> harum, harum. <laughs> By the Lord, madam. How now? Art thou mad? No, but I do read madness. Oh, prithee, read in thy right wits. I do read in my right wits, but to read thus, harum, harum, is to read in his right wits. Oh. Harum, harum. Read it, you, Sirrah. <laughs> By the Lord, madam, you wrong me, and the world shall know it. Though you have put me into darkness and given your drunken cousin rule over me, yet I have the benefit of my senses as well as your ladyship. I have your own letter that induced me to the semblance I put on, with the which I doubt not but to do myself much right or you much shame. Think of me as you please. I leave my duty a little unthought of and speak out of my injury, the madly used Malmolia. Did he write this? The eyes, madam. The same is not much of distraction. Maybe and go see him delivered. My lord, these things further thought on, to think me as well a sister as his wife, here to crown the alliance on it, at my house and at my proper cost. 
Oh, madam, I am most apt to embrace your offer. Your master quits you. For your service is done to him so much against the metal of your sex. Since you called me master for so long, here is my hand. You shall from this time be your master's mistress. <laughs> You have done me wrong, notorious wrong. Have I, Malvolio? No. Madam, you have. I pray you, peruse this letter. You cannot now say it is not your hand, or it is not your seal, not your invention. You can say none of this. And tell me, in the full modesty of honor, where you've given me such clear lights of favor, bade me come smiling and cross-guarded to you, to frown upon Sir Toby and the light of people, and acting this in an obedient hope, why you have suffered me to be imprisoned, locked in a dark house, visited by the priest, and made the most notorious <laughs> geck and gull that air invention played on. Tell me why! I, I, alas, Malvolio, it is not my writing, though I confess such like the character, but out of question tis Mariah's hand. Now I do bethink me, it was for she who told me thou was mad, then camest in smiling, and in such forms which were presupposed upon thee in the letter. This practice hath most shrewdly passed upon thee, but when we know the grounds and authors of it, thou shalt be but the plaintiff and the judge of thine own cause. <coughs> Good madam, hear me speak, and let no quarrel, nor no brawl to come, well, take the fun. condition of this present hour, which I have wondered at. In hope it shall not, most freely I confess, myself and Toby <laughs> set this device against Malvolio here upon some stubborn and uncourteous parts we had conceived against him. Mariah writ the letter, at Sir Toby's great importance. In recompense whereof, he had married her. What? How with a sportful malice it was followed, they rather clung on laughter than revenge. If such injuries be justly weighed that have on both sides passed. Ah, fool. How have they baffled thee? Uh, 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 some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Uh, I was one in this endeavor, once a top ass, but that's all one. And thus, the whirly gig of time brings him his revenge. <laughs> I will be revenged on the whole pack of you. He hath been most notoriously of you. I say, oh, I'll pursue him and treat him to a peace. Meantime, sweet sister, we shall not part from hence. And Cesario, come, for so you shall be known while you are still a man. But in other habits, you are seen Orsino's mistress and his fancy's queen. Uh, my lord, wrap it up with a song. <laughs> <laughs> and when I was a little tiny boy with the hey ho, the wind and the rain, a foolish thing was but a toy, for the rain it raineth every day. With the hey ho, the wind and the rain, for the rain it raineth every day. And when I came to man's estate, with the hey ho, the wind and the rain, gets knaves and thieves, men shut their gates, for the rain it with a hey-ho, the wind and the rain, for the rain it raineth every day. A long time ago the world began with a way ho wind and the rain. But that's all one hour play is done. <laughs> and we'll strive to please you every day. With a hey-ho, the wind and the rain, for the rain it raineth every day.